that acting right there, when I don't, when I can't stand you and I don't know you, that is acting. <laughs> yeah, she does a fantastic job. I hope that nobody should get actually mad at her for being an actress, but she played that role so well that she's going up there. To me, this is more, this is Percy tier. All right, anybody here? Percy. Here? She almost got the Percy. Whitmore almost got award. the Percy Whitmore Award. The Percy Whitmore Award is a character who's behind you would be if you saw them on the street in real life. And if you know about the Green Mile, you know who Percy Whitmore is, and you know exactly why he would catch the hands today. I didn't know the sponge is supposed to be wet. You want to know why? here um i'm brandon roper and i'm otis roper and uh we just watched uh, the new color purple movie the musical yes the musical because it's fun to sing in the most miserable set of circumstances imaginable well we're gonna tell you what we thought about this movie um yeah today on the uh super up brothers today our teacher taught us about a place called africa she say our mamas come from Queens over there. That means that we royalty. <laughs> what? So why? Why what? Why why are we singing? <laughs> I mean, you know, you sing because of the struggle and all that to get Listen, through. listen. We've been down with the color purple since. It's one of our core memories. In fact, we have it on right now. Y'all don't even know this. Okay, we're watching the, the Steven Spielberg, okay, the color purple. This movie is something that's near and dear to our hearts. We've grown up watching it. One of my first memories is not being able to watch this movie because I was like two. Like being forced out of the room because, you know, it's woefully inappropriate for children. Um, I never had that. We, I was always in the room. I was always watching. It was always on. If there were more than the, like the, the couple core family members that we had, as soon as they were around, Color Purple was on. That, yeah. uh, Ben Hur, and uh, the Ten Commandments. Yeah, yeah. So this is, I mean, goes back to um, years ago. The '85 version got nominated for a bunch of Oscars. Didn't win any. Not, not, not a one. Not one. Not nary. Um, not nary. It lost one. to Amadeus. It's a good movie. I mean, I you know I'm not knocking it. it but the color purple really is the. I think it's the film that explains the struggle of the Jim Crow South from the view of the protagonist who, through no fault of her own, this is just where Celie is. Yeah. She just happens to be in the worst situation you can possibly be in yeah. in the south we're, we're gonna make a distinction here because during this review there's gonna be a little bit of a, it's gonna be a little weird because once again we find ourselves talking about a remake or a reimagining of something that already previously existed so we're gonna be jumping back and forth between the previously existing version and the, the remake now the musical yeah I, i'm telling you now we're still a comedy channel so it's gonna be funny so if you easily triggered stuff like that yeah. you need to get check out now I mean, because this is a comedy channel look, we're, we're gonna y'all made it a musical what you want from me we're gonna be making jokes and stuff like that the <laughs> utterly serious tone of the color purple does not allow for that However, controversy. once again, you've made a musical out of something that is essentially horrible. Controversy. I mean, I mean, this is not quite black trauma to the level of, like, slavery. I mean, it's, it's not quite there. They cousin. I don't need you to love me. Afternoon. I need me a wife. So... How can we possibly talk about The Color Purple, the musical, without talking about the Color Purple original film? Like, there's no way we're not going to be interchanging, so we might as well review both of them, you know, just back, kind of back to back. So yeah. that's what we're going to do today. It's basically impossible to not talk about one without the other, so we're going to have to. So let's start off with the musical. We start, you know, much as the other film did with, you know, Seeley. Happy and, time. Yeah, Seeley's young. Me in and the you must never part. All that stuff, yeah. Even if we have to part, you and me, us have one heart. 
That's pretty much it. And, and, I was fine with that at the beginning because that builds the contrast of life when it was positive until... Oh, Get off my land! You... I rat you every day! Daddy! Nothing but death can keep me from it! They keep singing in the beginning and it makes it a little weird. The thing about the color purple that's jarring, you see these little girls, it's all fun. One of them's pregnant, real pregnant. Already it should, that should be jarring in itself. And then the music starts. That is, is a big issue with the musical versus, you know, this, and I know this has been made into a stage play. I know this has been done. Yeah. Broadway musical and all that. I get it. In a motion picture setting, it can be a bit jarring. Especially when you know about the previous version, once again. Not saying that one is inherently worse or better than the other. Yeah. It's just a little weird. It just can be a little bit where you're like, wait, what? It's because the subject matter, it goes from lighthearted. It's from a child's point of view. It can go from lighthearted to very, very dark, just back and forth now. That's emotionally draining, and now you don't want to sing about it. Yeah. Like, I got people actively, you know, breaking it down in the background. Like, I'm talking like, you know, they, they, they're popping and locking and whatnot. Yeah, it's a little... It's a little weird with choreography and knowing what the subject matter is. That being said, acting wise, the actors. Let's let's talk about the actors. Okay, so let's talk about the people who are in this movie. First of all, this movie is starring a top billing uh, Fantasia Marino, or just Fantasia, because I didn't never knew her last name until just now. Not not to write. Um, Haley Bailey um, as Nettie, Taraj P Henson as Suge Avery, Danielle Brooks as Sophia, Coleman Domingo as Mister, and Corey Mr. Hawkins as Harpo, um, Sierra as the older version of Nettie, and Dion, uh, Dion Cole as Alfonso. Now, first of all, Dion Cole in this movie does a fantastic job as the father of the two girls, as the father, because he is literally unrecognizable from his comedy generally roles. No faith in humanity. Faith in humanity? No faith in humanity. <gasps> That is how serial killers are born. Okay, look, I know it looks bad, but that is a little white girl. And as a black man... No! No. You do not get to play the race card today. Not with that. Sorry, I'm late. There was a little snowflake on the elevator, so I had to take the stairs. Me too. Careful, Dre. Someone's out there setting traps. He looks like he belongs in the color purple in this movie. He does a great job at inhabiting a different person um he's great lou gossett jr oh yeah is in this movie put go. some respect on his we name we cannot go without jariba i said what i was I said when he was jariba shikra shikra, shikra. shikra. if y'all know where this is Kosh, basso, driba, shikra, shikra. so your name's jerry shigan so what if y'all know this pro jerry shigan so what oh man listen <laughs> Comment below if you know where that's from. Put some respect on <laughs> Lou Gossett's name. The man has been acting since forever and has done so many roles. Oh, yeah. The reason why he's great in this is because he's despicable. He's horrible. And he inhabits that role perfectly. The women at this table have lost their mind. You gotta give big, 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 big respect, big props to David Allen. Greer. Dag. Oh, Dag, you're so great. David Allen Greer is one of those actors who I feel like has never... He never got what he deserved. Gotten the justice of what... never gotten the props he deserved. He is so funny. He's hilarious in everything. He's always We've been his... down with you since in Living Color, bro. Man, he's been bringing his A-game, okay? He Actually, is... I'm gonna get you, sucker. I mean, he was in that. Yeah, he, he was. was. I'm gonna get you... No, that. no I... Hollywood shuffle. He's in that too. I mean, everything the way his brothers have ever done. He is, he's one of those actors I feel like never has gotten the justice he deserves. And I, I just want to give him a second. He's great as the Reverend. And he was great as the Reverend in Martin. <laughs> Leon Lonnie Love. <laughs> <laughs> Every scene that he's in, Every I didn't know you could play the piano like that, man. So yeah, he was, get together and he was actually playing the piano in the in that scene. Let's give a shout out to to the woman who would 
I mean, I know I saw her acting in this movie, but if it was on the street, she would still catch the hands. Uh, Elizabeth Marvell as Miss Millie. Um, yeah, she shows up. And she's the the essentially the white lady who tries to get you know <laughs> tries to get so when I see her when I see her in the movie man when like, I listen, listen when I see her in the movie and I, I mean, like I don't know karate now you leave him alone now you go on you on you don't even know now I don't I don't know karate man listen <laughs> but I know karate listen I'm I'm man of peace. I do not want no, the troubles I want to smoke. That acting right there, when I don't, when I can't stand you and I don't know you, that is acting. <laughs> yeah, she does a fantastic job. I hope that nobody should get actually mad at her for being an actress, but she played that role so well that she's going up there. To me, this is more, this is Percy tier, all right? Anybody here? Percy, here? she almost got the Percy Whitmore Almost got the Percy Whitmore Award. The Percy Whitmore Award is a character who's behind you would be if you saw them on the street in real life. And if you know about the Green Mile, you know who Percy Whitmore is, you know exactly why he would catch the hands today. I didn't know the sponge is supposed to be wet. You want to know why? It's, it's what, 1999 was tw over 20 years ago. Today. Percy he would catch over. the hands. <laughs> catch the hands. <laughs> right now. Hey, comment below. What <laughs> is an actor that played somebody that's so despicable that you cannot separate them from that character it now happens. And, and you just don't like them It anymore. happens. It was almost called the Lawrence Fishburne Award. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> Mine is Jenny <laughs> that's it. from Forrest Gump. Oh. There's gonna be some changes made. Put it on. This ain't me. Hush. We need to look like we belong. The cast, they do great. I think the acting in this movie was really top tier. I have nobody in this movie who stood out as just being like the weak link or bad or anybody was Should just unable. Avery. Uh, Taraj. T T T Taraj, for me, she was the focal point of the spirit of the music of this film right there. Agreed. Uh, spectacular. I play blues, jazz, and stuff like that, and that's not easy to, if you're, that. that's not what you do, that's not easy to do, and so I, I think that she got some skills in that. Oh, for sure. She is, um, one, I mean, she's already won an Oscar with Hard Out Here for a Pimp. She's already won an Academy Award. You mean Academy Award winners? Yeah, I mean three, six, six mafia. Yes, she was. Hey, featuring. She's on there. That's on I mean, there. You, is. you, you were featuring. That makes you an Oscar. Did Scorsese ever win an Oscar? Yes, he did. Finally, he finally for, uh, for The Departed. Okay, so, so <laughs> he got one, but Three Six Mafia got one first. Got one first. <laughs> that's, that's, man. that's a real fact. That really did happen. I thought Taraj did a great job as Suge Avery. I thought uh, Coleman Domingo deserves some special respect for playing uh, Mister so well because he's in the literal shoes of a giant. That would be Danny Glover. Danny Glover, who I know, I know I have family members who still can't stand Danny Glover because he's an actor who played this role. I understand. Like, Look at you. Look at you. You're watching. You didn't even know it was a musical. Just come in here. And you thought you was going to enjoy this movie. And you was going to have it. It's going to be singing and dancing. That's, that's what you thought. It you're ugly. You're skinny. You're shaped funny. And you're too scared to open your mouth to people. All you fit to do is be Shug's maid, take out a slop jar, and maybe cook a food. And you ain't even that good of a cook anyway. <laughs> Who you think you is? You can't cuss nobody. Look at you. You're black. You're poor. You're ugly. You're a woman. You're nothing at all. How about a shame? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. How do you... <laughs> How do you project, I want to be the worst possible person yeah. that I could possibly be? Yeah. And he does a great job at it. He he takes it, he's killing the role. I mean, he really does do something. Now here's, if we can just overall go with it, here's a few 
issues slash quibbles that I had with the movie. I'm thinking you had them because we talked about it kind of beforehand. Music and the use of music in this film. To me, it's it's excessive. I, I mean, I don't know. You might be able to know. Once again, we're black. We've gone to Brothers. church our whole lives. All right. Of and any black person who's ever gone to church will tell you there's always that church where they sing just a bit too much. Right? I'm just, let's let's go. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll. Down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. In this way, you need that whole time religion. It's good enough for me. Six songs. Each one more uplifting than the last. Like an A, 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 a B, a D, a, a E selection. Like, like, I mean, do we need to use the first eight letters of the alphabet to do all these songs? Like, Yo, here's, here's <laughs> what I would have done. You had the little girls sing their songs in the beginning. When life starts getting tough, the music goes away. Yeah, or just dies down or only use it to bring up yeah, certain the points music of emphasis. goes away. When Suge Avery comes into the film, the music starts again. Then you can, you can do it like, but I just think because of the subject matter. Listen, the color purple, I think the reason why the color purple hits so near and dear is it's talking about all the stuff that my aunts, my uncles, my mom, my dad, my grandparents was talking about, yeah. it showed it to me on film, and it's rough. I mean, Will, we come from a family of sharecroppers. Both of our parents are from Arkansas. Like a literal water tower mm -hmm. on the side of the road on the way to Memphis. Talk about it. When I see poor black people in the South, like, mm -hmm. these are all stories that we've heard. These are all stories that we've, you know, parts of our family. I mean, there's stuff in it. Like, we've got destitute black men in our family tree. This movie, and just, maybe this is a story in general, so I can't really fault the movie, but all of the men are horrible. Horrible, horrible human beings. They're all abusive. Because you're black, and you're ugly, you're and I'm not supportive, you're and I'm not loving, ugly. and I'm not kind, and I'm not gentle, and if I am, I'm a weakling, and you Yeah, and, and I mean, it's stupid. And it, it really does come off that way. All of the men are just the most like snarling, <laughs> just savage. This is my problem with crazy. the color purple. It's a great standalone story and I it, I it really is something that's iconic. And let's not pretend like Steven Spielberg yeah. didn't give us the first version of this in yeah. purity. Yes. He gave okay, so so we're comparing that one to that one, but I just go if none of the men in the story are good at all, except the mail carrier, whose shoes was on Chris? Man, that shoe. his shoe game was Chris. His shoes. He, his shoe. he was in a. He was in a literally burned up field, right? A burned up field, and it was glistening. I mean, his glossy. His shoes were shiny. He, he stepped was, out. He should have stepped out of that carriage. Like my man, like my man does. What'd you say now, Chip? Spice Adams. Spice Shout out to Spice Adams. Adams. Spice Adams. Adams. You should have stepped out there. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> he was crispy, man. Yeah. He was never going but home. But nobody else in the story that is a man, if you're like Harpo, who tried to be loving but got ran over. Yeah. And then you got Mr. who's just a, I mean, he is a product of his dad. And, you know, that's another problem I have with this movie and just the story in general. It's not anything to do with the plot elements. Like, look, I get it. Like, this story, as as a hyper-focus, like, of this these characters going through these things, that's fine. My problem is that it also takes any responsibility for the position of these people away from what was going on with black people in the South at the time. It makes it like, oh, they were just being miserable and terrible to each other. It, they were just being miserable and terrible to each other, and nothing else was going on. Definitely I, not. I the don't know the, why Mister would be so miserable down here. It was yeah, the time of his time oh of life in the South. Like, there's gonna be some changes made. Put it on. This ain't me. Hush. We need to look like we belong. Let's see the smile and color. <gasps> 
sweet and loving God. <laughs> So when it comes to the character making decisions as a character, now here's the thing, Miss Seeley is intrinsically good. She's just good. Yeah. She has made a choice. She's talking to God the whole movie. She's just good. And her goodness changes everybody else around her. She makes everybody else art. What is Miss Seeley's character flaw? She doesn't fight back. Yeah, that being a pushover, being kind of a passive person who life just happens to until she decides to be different. And it's not just decides to be, it's until she realizes that there's actually some good. No, she has somebody champion for her. That's and somebody who champions for her. Sugar Avery champions for her. Yeah. To Mr. Yes. And that the Hell No song in the, in the movie. Oh yeah, well that's just the uh, absolute, uh, you don't need, uh, we don't need nobody, don't need no, we, we don't I need mean, no hell. We don't it's, need. it's not like we don't need nobody. It's it's more about her being like, you know, to all the BS that goes on, just say hell no. Well, that happens later in the movie. You got to stay up. Hell no. There's gonna be some changes made. And she says hell no. Then what happened? The system. Yeah, literally, but that's that's my problem with the movie is it acts like they all don't exist in this system what? of oppression. What? Literally oppression. Like I know that uh, people. What was it? Was it? Was it Raven? What was it? What was it? Oh no, no. Was, uh... Crow. Oh, Crow. Oh, Crow. Yes. Yes. James yes. Crow. James. James Commonly Crow. known as Jim Crow. Jimmy. Jimmy. But like this was a legal government separation of humans and a legal separation of people by race. You want to vote, don't you? How many how many bubbles in a bar of soap? Yes. I mean, there's the grandfather clause. How there's many the, how many hairs on a dog's back? I mean, like seriously, like there's the grandfather clause, there's literacy tests, there's poll taxes, there's all sorts of reasons why these people have no actual power or control over their lives. The only thing in the movie that gives them any autonomy or power is land. Do you think that that might make them bitter? Well, I mean, it might make them angry. It makes them the biggest fish on their little ponds in these backwater places in Georgia, which is why people like Mister act like a total tyrant in his house. But there's no backstory given to that. Now, does that excuse Mister being an absolute monster? No, no, because we need to be held accountable for the decisions that we make. Of course, personally, of course. But go. the idea of this all taking place in like just these are just black people being horrible. But to wait, each other. stop. It's time for a song. Uh, that's, that's really the problem. With the movie. That's the problem with the movie. It's time for a song. It's time for. Oh, it's breaking it. The problem with the movie. You've got all this horrible stuff occurring. Hold on a second. Abuse. Man. Okay, wait. wait. Another song. Another song. Another song. It's a little weird. It don't need no. It just, it's, it's just a bit weird. It's a bit weird for the tone. Maybe I'm just crazy because, you know. Like, you know, I'm an old guy who just, like, like thinks about the original or whatever. But more of anything, it's just, like, what I'm seeing on screen doesn't match what I'm feeling. And that can be a bit jarring as a person who's in the audience. That's very jarring when you go to a movie and you're like, oh, man, that's a horrible thing. I just, they're, they're singing. Well, dang. Like, I mean, even in, like, movies like Sweeney Todd, where it's, like, the tone is, like, literally just miserable. The whole story and is we miserable. We like musicals. We, we do. We really do. Yeah, but I, I got the Phantom of the Opera on my phone right now. I know you do too. Like we both stop like music. Stop snitching, man. man. It's fine. We we listen. We we literally did the Sweeney Todd review last year. We're good. <laughs> they know. Did anybody? Did y'all watch that? I mean, if you didn't, it's on the playlist. <laughs> anyway, no, seriously, we love. Wait a second. It's time for us home. Why? 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 You see how jarring that was? <laughs> you see how you weren't ready for that? It came out of nowhere. It's almost as if it's a weird time to just throw a song in. But it, it's that's my biggest beef with the movie is it's super jarring when you've got that hopeful stuff. And the, the use of music is selective because there is a very musical scene of the original Color Purple where Suge Avery goes from the juke joint to her church masterpiece to reconcile the masterpiece it's it's a beautiful scene where she reconciles with her father she goes back to church it's supposed to be her redemption arc and in this movie it's just kind of her walking up to the church and going uh, and sitting in the thing with her dad and then it's just her and him together privately because they had to reconcile in private but that's that's whack 
No, uh, that's yeah, whack on two levels. If you wrong somebody in public, oh, you should literally go for recompense in public. Yeah, but that that would make him a, a, a character arcing and make him a, a positive. Well, that's another problem I have with with that. Is like he he deserved that, she deserved that. It was a better moment for that character than just to get a hug from your dad and everything's okay. What I truly love about the original Color Purple movie is that happens on a Sunday while they're at the juke joint and they hear the gospel songs over that and everybody goes to church that yeah. day. That that is huge, it's powerful. This one just kinda it should've it should have hit me with the overhand right. Yeah. And it was kind of just uh, yeah. but David Allen Greer, even in this scene, yeah, this scene, this tiny little scene that should have hit me like that, his presence. Yes. Amazing. We said this kudos. And so. honestly, this this role wasn't really comedic for him. I mean, he's still funny in parts of it, but he it wasn't comedic. It was mostly dramatic. It was mostly, like you said, presence. Even more reason to give Dag a lot of credit. He, he's he's out here doing doing it. He needs to be in more stuff all the time. Like put David Allen Greer in things. He's he's good. Toward the end of the film, uh, the music kind of stops. Like they stop using as much. Uh, it's not as frantic. Yeah. It calms down. It's so it tonally shifts. Yeah, in the, in about the middle of the second act, yeah. you know, they kind of they kind of stop, and that's when the movie gets. That's when the movie does some of its best work. Is when there's less singing going on and more of the characters do. Like, I mean, it works as a dramatic, you know, as a dramatic story, but it, it was working a lot better when there was less music because I don't know. I don't know who did the music supervision on this, but this movie I feel like could have is, is like three or four song edits. And, and seen from, maybe one or two scene reshoots away from being something that you could have left the theater going, this was great. Yes. Not only was it like, this is a totally, now here's the thing, totally different from the original. And when I say totally different, I just mean like the tone of it. Like the original movie, the drama or whatever, that no, no. Musical is a little bit lighter. It's got some horrible stuff in it. You know, it's got some implied horrible stuff in it that we all have to sit through in the movie. But it is not nearly as, I would say, like, you know... The jail scene. Torture they have to endure is a subject that the movie does deal with, that the musical does deal with. And I believe that they both do them pretty respectfully. Mm -hmm. it, that's what makes the music jar. Yes. That's why the, 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 the upscale beat that you're trying to do doesn't quite yeah. make us get like in the in the mood because it's it's kind of weird that way. Which is funny because that's one of the parts where there's not very much music. That's one of the jail scenes. Like from the, from the you know, all that stuff all the way down, there's not much music there. And it's just kind of let to sit. And that's when you get some of the best dramatic moments of the movie. Very much so. Now it's all okay. good. Center of the universe. Oh, yes, I am. And uh, so, like, I mean, honestly, look, like I said, I was not mad at going to see this movie. I thought this movie was good. I thought that the the people who made it were well intentioned. They weren't just doing it to just you know as as a cash grab. This isn't cynical. No, no, it is. It's a a labor of love. You can tell somebody loved this and they just want to add their own thing. Yeah, I, I've got no. That's why I'm not the curmudgeon. It's like don't go watch the movie because of this. Like no, it's just a little bit jarring yeah. for me. It literally says like the retelling of the classic story. I mean like the it's part of the title or whatever. Like yeah. a, a remake or retelling of the classic story. Yeah, that's on five. What would you give this on a scale of one to five? Uh, Raisins. Straight race on the front porch in the southern Jim Crow heat with the mailman coming up with the crispiest shoes in the south. I will tell you this. This is one thing that is kind of weird about this movie as well. When you watch the original Color Purple, it looks like the south. There's bugs. There's like, I mean, mosquitoes and all stuff. And this new one, there's not a mosquito anywhere. Like, they're just, they're just in the south. Like, first of all, our, like, our family's from Arkansas. That ain't even the deep south. This movie takes place in Georgia, okay? 
And I don't know much about Georgia, but I'm telling you, the mosquitoes, if you've ever been in the South, they've got health insurance plans, okay? <laughs> the mosquitoes, they have a 401k plan. They've got a 720 credit score right now. Mosquitoes is down there. They're in business. Do you understand? Okay? <laughs> Mosquito. They don't care. <laughs> right? Not a, not a bug. Not a, not a bug on film. It's just weird. It's just jarring. Because yeah, nobody has, like, just the, 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 the miscellaneous mosquito bite. Nothing. Little whelks that you be having that you see somebody do. You know what? It's got you good. Everybody has to, like, I mean, this one, if you could say anything, the criticism of the movie, everybody looks too clean. It's too clean for 1909 in the heat in the South, okay? Yeah. No, not a sweat ring around the neck. Look, you say what you want to. Danny Glover, Danny Glover had that sweat ring around his <laughs> neck in just about every shirt he wore in the color purple. The sweat ring almost got a credit. <laughs> 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 All right, so so out of one to five, what would you give it? Honestly, I give it a I give it a solid three. I give it a three. It, it's it, it, because it's not bad. It's not bad, and I and I do like some of the music, but like honestly, tonally, if I could just shift it around a bit, I would probably like it a lot more. I'd probably give it at least a three and a half, four. You know, it's worth seeing. I think it's worth seeing. I think it's worth giving credit to people who are trying to make something. Yeah, trying to do something new. You don't got to do it the same way everybody's done it before. So yeah. I would say the same. I'll give you a three out of five. Just it wasn't my cup of tea, but I mean you you. you Whenever you're attempting to tackle a giant, when you love the material, you give people better things. So whoever was trying to do this, I see what you were trying to yeah. do. We see what you're trying to do. Yeah. We just need... I mean, we've talked about it. That's what's wrong with the MCU right now. The MCU, when you've got a bunch of executives over, you know, with their with their ash and their big cigars sitting around with their brandy going, ah, put a giant spider in it, let him fight Superman. <laughs> like, you know, that, like, happened. that person that, that doesn't happened. care about the material. You need people who care. If you get those people in the room, you will get a better product. This movie was done with care. Yes. It, it like the precision, like they, 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 they had it. They had it. They could have nailed it. There's a few scenes that I thought were a little weak. And, and that's the reason, I mean, it, and the jarring, t that and the, the mismatched tone of the beginning and the end. It was totally done well. I just really wish this movie was done with that kind of uh, vision and foresight. This would have easily been, uh, this could have knocked me on my butt if they would have presented it right. As somebody who grew up in the church who blazed blues and jazz, yeah. like... Well, it's like, even even the end scene, the most powerful scene in the movie, where her children come back. In the first movie, if you watch that scene and you don't tear up, something's Stake wrong with Stake him. You. They're There's a vampire. Something they're wrong watching with that you. movie with you, and they, if they're at the end, and you yeah. come up, Mama, and you, it's Man. fine. Stake them in the heart the, that is there of the devil. The <laughs> first time I watched this movie all the way through as an adult, I was just sitting there like, I don't know what all this was about. You know, this guy's just horrible to her. And then, hey, Mama. <laughs> I was like, oh, keep it together. It, no, it, it, was, it, it was ugly. It gave me the, go, the golden eye. Ah, man, look, it was stupid. It's it like, yeah. Give but, me that guy, the dark Vader. But that's oh. what I'm talking about. This movie kind of misses moments yes. like those where yes. they could have, like, all right, you got the ball. You throw it up. All right, here we go. He's about to dunk it. G -g 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 -g. <laughs> Pop the rim just flies up. And it was like, I mean, they still won the game, but, you know, you could have you done it cleaner. All right? You could have done it better. All right? Being a Chiefs fan, believe me, I understand that right now. It's hard out here in these streets. But, hey, two time in the last five years. I'll take it. I mean, I grew up, listen, listen, like, listen, Todd Blacklitch, okay? How about that? Remember that? Yeah. No, you don't, because he was terrible. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I've gone too far. So, uh, you know, for Super Rubber Bros, I'm Brandon Rope. <laughs> And what are you going to do, huh? You're black. You're ugly. You're, cool. you're, 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 you're ugly. ugly. You don't you're like me. You don't share. You don't subscribe. And you wonder why we don't come. Ain't nothing good going to come to you. Till you like. Till you share. Till you subscribe. I'm Otis Roper. I love how this, this, this is like the international symbol of, of a, curse. Of putting the of putting put a that, curse on put you. Put that Celio. Yes. Now listen. Yeah, I, I, I've had people do that. You be in church. Oh, they do that to you definitely. Hey. Thank y'all so much. This is the, about the end of 2023. We're heading into 2024. Thank you for all the love and support for the channel. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thank yeah. you for telling people. Thank you for clicking that button. Yeah. Thank you for commenting. Thank, yeah. Just thanks for all of it. And uh, let us know what you want us to review in the future. Yeah, we're going to keep it up. We like movies, so we do this free. All right, once again, I am Otis Roper. I'm Brandon Roper. And together we are... Ew.
kill the Super Roper Brothers. Mm-hmm. Like, whoever's gonna try to actually remake Star Wars, now that the mixture's all messed I mean, up, they're gonna... like, you're gonna, you're tackling a giant because of those, that original trilogy. Yeah. That, that's what you had to overcome. I mean, that's what everybody who's tried to make a different version of this has done. I mean, they're like, anybody who's, I mean, the prequels, the sequels, all that stuff, you're trying to do that. Now, here's the problem. Do you love it? If you don't love it, don't remake it. Uh, Dennis, uh, Villanueva? Yeah, that's... Yeah, he, that dude loves it. That guy, like, I mean, first of all, Dennis Villanueva is the guy. Like, he's the guy the right guy. now. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care about your... I mean, I I, I like James Gunn. The guy. I, I like him. No, nah, Dennis Villanueva is the guy. Yes. He's the guy right now. Yes. Okay? Whenever you're casting anybody... Yes. Like, everybody <laughs> else is just trying to be playing second fiddle. This guy cares about the material and gave me a 30-year sequel that we love Blade Runner 2049. Love it. Um, Tom Cruise, say what you want to about the man. Uh, when he came with uh, Top Gun Maverick, which launched this channel, when you love the material, you give people better things. You're blind. You're poor. You're ugly. You're a woman.